today's drawing is to draw uh, what we call a pivot arm and it'll be a multi-view image um, pretty much what you see here on the screen is our final product of our drawing today so we'll begin with a new drawing so I'm going to switch over to a, a blank model and to start this uh, drawing we're going to begin with the front view of the image so with your layers set to object we'll begin uh, building our shape start with uh, <clears throat> a few circle commands so we're going to circle my center point is going to be the origin 0 comma 0 and our first uh, diameter so D for diameter will be uh, 2.00 I'll hit enter to reactivate the circle command again I want to take my mouse and click the actual center point for that circle and I'm going to type the letter D for diameter our next one will be point uh, it'll be 3.38 alright our next circle because we started at the origin it's going to be kind of easy to uh, do the next one uh, the center point for this one's going to be 7.12 comma 0 and again these numbers are based off of our paper measurement here uh, again D for diameter this particular diameter will be 1.38 we activate the circle command again, click the center, do D for diameter, and this one would be 2.62. From there, we're going to use our line command, and we're going to draw a line from the top of this circle here, using the quadrant snap, to the quadrant of the smaller one. And we'll press enter then we'll draw another line at the bottom to do the same so here is our complete front view of this object now to prepare our right side and top view we're going to do a series of construction lines so we're going to switch this over to construction and the construction command is uh, under the extended draw command and it's here uh, the third icon or you can type the command X line from here I'm going to type H for horizontal because I need horizontal construction lines and I'm going to do a series of them uh, and again sometimes uh, you may only need to do a few at a time but I'm going to go ahead and do them all and, and what I'm doing is I'm clicking on areas that are important different snap points to help build the right side view. I'm going to press enter and I'll press uh, enter again to reactivate the command. This time I'm going to do vertical construction lines. And so I'm going to hit pretty much our main points, edges of circles, center points, all the way across to help build the shape. I'm going to press enter to end that command. I'm going to go right back to the construction command again. So I'm going to press enter to reactivate it. This time I'm going to type the letter A for angle. And the angle is going to be 45 degrees. I chose 45 degrees is to uh, create what we call the minor line. The minor line is the line that helps transfer the depth. And, and I'm going to use this intersection right here, the last corner uh, of the construction lines. So that 45 degrees is definitely going to help us uh, transfer measurements after we get either the top view or the right side view prepared. Alright, so with all those being done, we're going to switch back over to object and continue the rest of the shape. Alright, uh, one, I need to determine the distance from uh, the, the uh, front view as far as how far apart the top view is from there. So we'll go to offset and I'm going to choose two units for the distance between each other. So I'm going to click on the top construction line and I'm going to click above it. So now I have a construction line that's two units away 
and I'm going to use that to kind of guide the rest of my picture. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to do another offset, and based off the depth of my picture, the depth uh, is two units for the wide end of the shape, so I'm going to click the new construction line and click over, so that tells me that that's how far my top view is for, is how wide it's going to be with the depth, and I'm going to press enter, so now I can start building my back end of my shape now so I'm going to go to my line command and pretty much trace what I have here for the larger section so now I have a box presently here now to get the rest of my shape here I need to do some more sets of construction lines in the middle here the thickness is 75 0.75 and with that subtracted by two inches that leaves me with 125 so with that being divided in half that leaves me with um, 0.625 as my distance so I'm going to offset type in 0.625 press enter I'm going to click this construction line, I'm going to click up, and I'm going to also click this construction line, click down. So that should give me the space of 0.75. The more these construction lines we have, uh, it's encouraged that you turn the grid off so that you don't have additional lines uh, interfering. Now I can use my line command and start from this point and begin to this level here and the same on the opposite side all right in the meantime I will use my trim and press enter and trim out this part of the image because that's not uh, solid there and move on to this end now this end the depth is point uh, it's, it's uh, the depth is 1.25 so when we subtract that from 2 uh, that leaves us with 75 and we divide that in half that leaves us with 0.375 so we go to offset and we go type 0.375 and we're going to click this construction line and we'll click up and we'll click this construction line and click down so that gives me the depth of the top shape and again you saw me right click and press enter to end the offset command now I should be able to go to my line command start at this point come to this notch and go all the way to the end all the way up back over and close so that prepares that part of the shape so next would be to uh, use my construction lines and transfer depth uh, downward to form my right side view to do that I will go back to my construction line option so I will choose construction here go to my draw command hit the construction line and this time I'm going to choose a uh, vertical and I'm going to click on all these points going up the 45 degree minor line so here 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 there and there and then lastly there all those points will help guide me filling up my shape in this area right here. So I'll begin with the line command and pretty much uh, switch this over to object with my line command and I'll uh, draw the wider part of the shape which is more of a box and press enter. Then next comes the smaller part of the shape. So beginning at this point, so I have pretty much a box inside of a box. Then next comes the thin piece here, which is the 0 0.75, which will be pretty much just single lines. 
and again with the construction lines being created here it's just now a matter of just tracing on certain parts of the line every line must be used none should be left out with some form of line or two alright so that concludes my object lines for this picture next we will switch over to our hidden lines and represent all our hidden spaces which is two sections because we have the two holes here we have to identify those in other views where we can't see it so where the edge of the circle comes up we'll follow this skyline to that point and draw a line straight up that uh, construction line and I'm going to do the same on the opposite side press enter uh, we'll go over to the other side and do the same again this is where the small circle lines up on that construction line and I'm going to go to the other construction line to do the same on the right side view this line here represents the smaller circle and again this line here represents the bottom part of that circle inside the smaller shape but then I'm going to use uh, my line command again for the larger side of the shape which begins on this particular construction line and that should go all the way across like that same for this line alright so that concludes our construction lines uh, I mean not construction lines, our hidden lines next is our center lines so we go to center and again the center lines are the ones that represent symmetry for our circles the center lines are across so to prepare that we're going to type the command d-i-m-c-e-n dim sin it's an actual setting and we're going to type a negative point zero nine for the value then we're going to type dim for dimension and then the word center and press enter so that's just to select the arc or circle we will select the larger circle and as you can see the cross is prepared we press enter and we select the other circle and you can see the cross uh, automatically is created now for our other views it's just a single line to represent the center so we go to our line command we use the same construction line that forms the center point right there and with that we select the line and we have to add our additional point zero nine to the shape so center lines do extend past the object line and so we have to add the point zero nine by using the stretch option by clicking on the grip and stretching it point zero nine so again we stretch it up point zero nine and we click this grip stretch it down point zero nine we do the same for the right side view now uh, I am missing a construction line for the right side view so what I can do is take my mouse and use the tracking option so I would put my mouse on the center line I don't click it I just touch it and you'll see the green dotted lines to track it over and once I get to my intersection either I will see the triangle or an X and I just go all the way across to the other side from here I will stretch it over 0 0.09 and on the opposite side 0 0.09 alright so that will conclude our center lines for the picture lastly the dimensions to uh, do the dimensions what we're going to do first is let's get rid of the construction lines so it, the drawing is not as busy anymore so we're going to turn the light bulb off for construction that makes it a little better and then we're going to switch it over to dimension now again we dimension the front view as most as possible so we will go to our dimension diameter and we'll select the large circle here and place the dimension out to the side we go back to the same command we click the small circle and do the same again we go to the opposite side select the, the same dimension diameter for this particular circle and I'm going to place it down below on this end and we do the same for the inside circle 
I will place it here. Alright. Next, we gotta include the the distance between each other. So we will go back up to the top and use the linear option. We're gonna click on the end of this center point to the end of that center point, and we're gonna bring it down. Now the force the placement has to be three eighths away from the object. What I want to do is use the snap mode down here to kind of help me out with that. So what I'm going to do is let it jump two notches down and press the uh, and click. Up at the top, we need to identify the depth. So we'll do another linear from this corner to the bottom corner here. Use the snap, let it jump two notches out, and that'll be the two on this end. We do the opposite on the other side, two notches out, click. Lastly, identify the 75 in the middle. So I will do the linear again. This time we'll use the triangle in the middle, hit the perpendicular, and I'm going to just click. What I'm going to do is move the 75 just a little bit away from the object to uh, do that part. This drawing is now completely dimensioned and is complete in its entirety.